After the demo of the altars I just played, I got to be honest with you folks, this game jumped up to my list of titles I'm most excited about for the remnant of 2024. Before I tell you why, however, one point must be addressed. At this stage, three months before release, the altars does not run well. I had so many lag spikes while running this demo, not small ones either, but drops of 30, 40 FPS. In this game, while gorgeous and looking a little like an Unreal Engine 5 demo, didn't run well in the first place. At its best, the demo ran at just over 50 FPS on my 3080 gaming laptop. I know the old machine is a little long in its years, but I reckon it should be more than capable of running this bad boy. This isn't a stern, don't play type of warning. It's more of a watch out around release. Developer 11-Bit Studios has a good few months to fix the performance issues. I choose to trust that they'll have those well in hand. A pre-release demo is, after all, just that. A vertical slice of an unfinished product. So, caution is advised, but to my mind, the developers have earned some rope. That's how intrigued I am by the altars. 11-Bit Studios has published and developed some bangers in times past, but their upcoming game is that rarest phenomena in video games. An imaginative science fictional idea that feels fresh for the genre overall, not just in the world of gaming, but in sci-fi literature as well. I'm such a sucker for space colonization stories, but the core idea behind the alt is the quantum cloning is the kind of what-if scenario that I cannot resist. The timeline of Jan's life is a visual delight, and so the demo shows that the first time Jan uses the sci-fi procedure he creates one specific double, my hope is that we, the players, will be able to choose what strands of his life to change in order to bring about different alters when we wish, not when the story demands from us. The fact that each alter will have to be managed in conversation via dialogue choices is exactly the kind of psychological fun I love experiencing in games. Those first conversations I had only served to whet my appetite. I walked away from the demo with the impression that this game's writing was excellent. So many games I've enjoyed lately have had a bit of a stilted quality about their writing, but not this one. Smoothness to this one and beyond that. Smoothness to this one and beyond that. Everything I saw in the demo, even its unobtainium type of technology, which has driven Jan and the rest of his crew members to the far reaches of space. They bring about exciting questions indeed. I'm a big fan of an actor pulling different performances across a single project, and the Altis is going to put a solid weight on the shoulders of Jan Dolsky's actor. Alex Jordan isn't a familiar name, but the difference between Builder Jan and Engineer Jan has gone away a long way indeed to convincing me that he has the task well in hand. It has to be such great fun to explore a character that is, that is at once the same individual and yet so very, very different. The Altis isn't just a narrative game, it's also a survivor base builder. I've rarely been won over by survival elements in games, but base building has been a passion since I played Firaxis's XCOM reboot, maybe even earlier. There's a visual likeliness between the base building you'll see in XCOM type games and what's on offer here, in fact. The grid will be particularly familiar. And friends, I'll tell you right now, I dig that. I dig it lots. Tasks, it must be said, weren't all that demanding. Everything I did was simple so far, whether I was mining surface level minerals, probing the depths of the planet for organic materials, or finding the incredible unobtainium style resource, the mining of which is the reason why, as I mentioned, you are on this world in the first place. And it is not a pleasant world. Radiation is a constant concern and oxygen is, likely as not, non-existent. If that wasn't enough, 
If you don't move your base around the world within 10 days of your first arrival, one of the system's three suns will drop by to say hi, and in the process will literally melt the mobile base with you in it. All of that is to say, there's stakes here, and they're working for me. The survival and base building mechanics are inextricably tied with the narrative in a way that makes the elements of the former, in particular, much more appealing to me than are so many survival games. That genre's biggest problem for me is... Narrative is often just an afterthought, or even entirely non-existent. A few games buck that trend, of course. There's Grounded, where a narrative is secondary, but also a source of endless joy. You can always expect joy from an obsidian narrative. There's also... Nope, I got nothing. And that, on its own, is a good enough illustration to the point made. Survivor games need something like the altars to show us all how these mechanics can be used to tell an interesting narrative. I'm excited. Hopefully it releases in September. I believe someone leaked a date. Not sure they'll be able to uh, keep to that. We'll see. Until then, I am Philip Magnus. If you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button, subscribe, uh, ring that bell for notifications, and leave a comment down below what games are you most excited about for the rest of 2024. For me, it's this, it's Dragon Age, it is also um, the Tactical Wizards 1, Tactical Breach Wizards, which I, if I'm able, will make another short overview of. There are a few others as well. I might have to take a few days and think on that. Until then, I'm Philip Magnus again. Uh, you're not, and I will see you again next time. Bye!